All right, thank you very much, Veli, and a welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready to jump into our fourth and final matchup of the evening here, as DZ and Oxygen are about to go head to head. Not the best stage so far for DZs. This would be a great opportunity for them to get themselves back on better footing, especially considering the fact that they have that additional match tomorrow as well, due to unfortunately one of their players catching COVID early in the season. That was at the major, so we worked with them, moved one of their matches to the end of the stage where they're going to have to play it tomorrow. Yeah, which is honestly fantastic for them. We would much rather do that than cancel out the match outright. Yep. And uh, honestly, I feel like this game can really build up to be something. Yes, we have the desk favoring OXG, but I think Dark Zero really do have an opportunity here. We've got our community poll question, and uh, this, is, this is an interesting one here, folks. <laughs> uh, we'd like to know from you guys, who is more likely to get zero kills while in a rank stack? Will it be Veli or Spawny, Jesse's cat? <sighs> you know... It's really, it's really hard choice, John, because Veli only plays shields. So like, <laughs> I don't know exactly how much killing he's going to be doing. And also, if you guys remember the clip of Veli uh, hitting that 180 on Rams all the way back at Raleigh, yeah, I told him to do that. So he didn't do that by himself. <laughs> so take everything from him. Yeah, I think. I mean, listen, man, I'm just being. You know, Spawny might be my choice. That's all I'm saying. You know, she's got the paws. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see your answers a little bit later on. And unfortunately for Veli, he's gonna have to reveal those answers i'm pretty sure so yeah, I, we'll I just see gave up his lore as well, <laughs> we'll everyone see. was like oh that shield play was so cool <laughs> we'll see what's up being right for that one as it is time ladies and gentlemen to get into the matchup oxg i've had a fantastic stage so far and they are looking to close things out over today and tomorrow here currently holding the number two seed in the division going up against dark zero who's been struggling so far here currently at number six we're into the bands and once again just in case you missed the notes there it is a chalet for the map you just saw it on the fly through so we'll get right into the bands and not going to be too surprising to start things out here oxygen will knock thatcher out of play yeah which is interesting we had Thatcher come through earlier today on our chalet, and we actually ended up seeing, I believe, one round of Thatcher overall on the offensive side. So we're not going to have any of that opportunity uh, come to fruition here on this chalet. And we also won't have the opportunity to pick up Nomad either. So this is going to be uh, somewhat limiting to what the offense is going to be allowed to do early on. The biggest thing is, is going to be those distance-based engagements when it comes to those hard breaches and the way they want to try and get rid of some of these hard-to-reach spots. Well, Mai is also going to be removed from Dark Zero here. This is a routine thing that we see from them so honestly was expected walking in here so the last one's going to be it is going to be the choice of oxygen and they pretty much have a full spread of choices to pick from here it really depends on which way they want to send it not any huge counters or anything to throw out at this point with their band so they're just going to go for a pretty standard one here and remove valkyrie from play once again too universally useful at this point for defenders so she's getting banned out quite often yeah this is going to actually be a pretty interesting chalet because with the wamai band coming in here that means you can't go for the wamai jaeger combo you're going to have to lean into a rooney for a lot of these uh other situations where you're going to be trying to block outdoors and things along those lines so we'll really have to see what oxygen and well when dark zero gets there what they both have to offer on these defensive sides obviously the valkyrie also being removed so they won't have that extra info and insight to try and use throughout the map so should overall be a pretty interesting game but that's enough of talking about the bands folks we're finally in here it's going to be a kitchen dining room defense off rip here for oxygen and they already have quite a unique look especially with laxing coming in with this alibi foxy's got a pulse to try and read out a couple of these, you know, situations that are going on upstairs with that cardiac sensor. And we also have the frost. Not to mention as well, Capitao getting six picked in there for Canadian. We've been seeing quite a bit of use out of him here today. Just looking at that last matchup uh, where he's been quite, you know, he's been missing, at least as far as I've been seeing for quite some time. That's already a big pickup for them as well. That six pick into Capitao is just a hallmark of having a Wamai ban. No one there to counter him. All of Capitao's arrows are going to land true. And for those of you that did not play back in the day, Capitao can be extremely influential over a lot of the positioning based in sight, but it's going to be obviously down to Dark Zero trying to pick up a lot of, you know, intel as to where these positions are to actually make that go off. For Oxygen, they really need to try and deny the top-down control as well as those initial entry angles here because if Canadian can get into position to use those firebolts in the right space, then that is going to make it very, very tough for Oxygen to hold if this comes down to a sight fight in the final couple seconds. We usually see rounds boil down for that. It's also going to, of course, rely on Canadian keeping himself alive and keeping those bolts in check. 
check up until that point in the round. So that's a big risk there being played into it both Dark Zero, but if they can bring it all the way to the null point at the end of the round, then it can be incredibly useful and could very well be the thing that pushes it over the edge for them. Yeah, the uh, Finca Chalet meta also today has uh, really, really come out to play, and we're going to have it here yet again from Dark Zero. This time around, it'll be ran by Hyper, so we'll see what they can exactly do with that. The biggest thing right here right now, though, is they're obviously going to be bringing another set in the likes of NJR, so they'll have both of those frag sets as well as that hard breach in the likes of Eclipse, but they seriously have to hit their marks on this. This can honestly go pretty awry pretty quickly depending on the uh, character that ends up getting taken down here, so Dark Zero really, really does need to measure twice and cut once because any oversight on this is more than likely going to be detrimental. And we can see the prominence from OXG here. They are still wanting to get in the face of this potential play going into Solarium at the moment. They'll still be able to make their way in without too much of an issue. As you folks can see from the silhouettes, there's not a whole lot of resistance in the actual Solarium area for the OXG roster. They're looking to fend it off from downstairs for the most part. So they are going to net or let, rather, the Dark Zero members in and to start setting up on those top-down angles. As you see NJR having plenty of time to swing away at that and open up everything that this team will eventually need. This will also become the staging ground for Dark Zero 2. You'll notice quite a few other members are going to follow behind NJR's ascend into this position so that they can take this one and work it as, like I said, a staging ground to fulfill the rest of this attack with. How awkward for Dark Zero right now as well, or, or honestly rather Oxygen with the way that this top floor has broken down. They've been forced out towards Library. Now the good news is, is that Dark Zero is more than likely going to need some control around that fireplace hall space. Unless they can get some major picks inside of the site, then they can more than likely pressure out Kitchen as well. We saw that obviously break down in very similar fashion inside of our last chalet here too. So Dark Zero, still have plenty of opportunity to try and get through this, but this is the biggest thing. Fox is going to continue to read out all of the positioning from all of these DZ members through that cardiac sensor and honestly Foxy doesn't even need to kill anybody here he literally just needs the intel to feed back to these OXG members and they'll do all of the dirty work for him look at this timer right now somebody's got to get something going and finally it'll be Dark Zero as they take down Foxy and his beacon of info downstairs OXG have wasted so much time though so what's going to be left for Dark Zero to move in on well quite a lot apparently as they are moving very quickly into position to start putting themselves closer towards the kitchen plant here at the same time, there's a lot of defensive utility that still was unused at this execute point, but regardless, all the kills are going the way of DZ right now. Hyper most recently finding Laxing, bringing that defensive setup down to three, but as well, we're going to see oh, Vertical no. get one for himself. It's immediately exchanged, though, against Kino, and on top of oh, that oh, one, NJR oh. rips everyone to shreds in the final moments as he gets everybody cut, stuck in this corner here and just has a ball game with that angle. Unfortunate there for Auction. That top floor just deteriorating in a way that they really couldn't actually fight back against the hole. Dark Zero already having the door to piano sealed. There was no rotation for them for office. And if you try and hop out onto K9 Balcony and make your way into the office through that means you also get uh, marked outside because of those changes a while ago where it's one second now instead of three. So really no opportunity for those Oxygen members to actually try and take the fight to Dark Zero on that top floor, which that's the necessity that we were talking about. We needed to see them try and combat back against Dark Zero inside of this take. It never happened, and they transition it immediately into a take through Trophy after, of course, in Canadian fashion, they check downstairs to see what's going on. They find a pulse, and they find the first frag. So things continue to go well, or rather start pretty well for DZ, but they're not going to be able to repeat their efforts on the same site. OXG will not go for that same attempt back down on the inside of Kitchen. Instead, they're going to go towards the bar site, which has been the go-to for quite a few of our defensive teams here. And while it started out quite successfully, for defenders, we have started to see the stat line shift a bit more so towards attackers in recent weeks here as attackers have been figuring out how to better play this map as it's still one of the more recent ones that were added to the pool, or at least the remake of this one rather was added to the pool. Obviously, Bank is still the most recent, but this one's only been in, I think, about a year now, right? Uh, yeah, just around that time, yeah. right? But still in a building phase for some teams in terms of what they're looking to do with this map. But I think, once again, much like all of the other remakes or fixes to the maps that they have done. This one has definitely bolstered the competitive scene quite a bit here, and it's been quite a fun map to cast. Absolutely. I 100% I agree with you. I love the way that this map breaks down, and I think that it offers a lot of different interesting ways that the map ends up, you know, going throughout the round. And that's the biggest thing, is like, over time with Rainbow Six, we just ended up getting a lot of these maps that you only did things one way, and if you don't do it that way, then you're more than likely dumb, and you should be doing it that way. You know, and it just became very infuri uh, infuriating, especially around the time of, like, the utility 
utility meta, right? Where you're not bringing enough of these operators on defense and it, it basically just seems impossible because the offense at all times is bringing so many explosives, so many throwables because they're, they, they gotta be prepared for what the defense can possibly bring. So overall just really wasn't the funnest time when everything was just stuck in its ways. But ever since a lot of the, you know, changes to the meta as well as the maps, it's just been so fun to watch as well as cast. Now, the thing about for Chalet today is that it's actually been pretty slow rolling. It's a pretty smooth boil a great overall. Yeah, and this is going to be yet another round where we're going to have that, although it might be changing up very soon. We'll have an E1D out here as Yaga's going to get ripped from Hyper. What a shot from him to take down the Library Balcony player. And JR as well carries that forward and puts an even better advantage in the hands of Dark Zero by taking out Vertical, holding himself over at the top blue stairs and removing him from play. Once again, setting up DZ to pretty much have their way with this map at this point here, at least the greater sides of it here. As Unfortunately, Oxygen really cannot afford to keep any extended presence out about on the map here, except in the immediate area surrounding the site, as we can see for Kino and Foxe. Well, wouldn't you know it, Jesse, the two weeks that are off Dark Zero used to more than likely scrim a lot because they are looking completely different from once what they once were uh, two weeks ago, especially for NJR. He seems to be more on a front roll, at least here for Chalet. We don't know if it's, you know, map dependent or what, but as of right now, he is definitely that entry for Dark Zero that's just really getting this pressure onto Oxygen and exerting all of this and really making it difficult for them to try and battle back. They haven't even been able to find a frag inside of this round just yet, although it might be coming soon, and it's going to be coming from Kino. He'll knock down Canadian, which we've been seeing some action from throughout this thus far, but the arrow's really not able to get too much done, and now Dark Zero have to try and power forward. They're stuck upstairs currently inside of Library around the hatch. Foxe not able to get the first one, and oh no, he will get gutted inside of Bar Stock. It's all down to Kino now, and he's got zero Nitro Cell to try and play into this. Follow-ups in the gunfights are so smooth right now here from DZ, and they're going to follow that through all the way to the bitter end of this one as they get a smooth second round rolling for themselves and a 2-0 lead to build up on top of that OXG is facing off against a brand new beast here in Dark Zero today and they may not be ready for it with the way things are going right now. I wouldn't be surprised probably not immediately here but after the next round or two if things continue to go into DZ's favor there has to be a pause for OXG in the cards to figure out what's going wrong here. I would like to just remind you obviously this is not playing into this match but Oxygen is indeed qualified for the Sweden Major. Very just to let all of you guys know, this match means a lot more to Dark Zero than it means to Oxygen. That does not mean that Oxygen are going to be a bunch of slouches that just lay down and let this match happen. Oh, no, no, no. I still expect a uh, TO and all that kind of stuff to come out from OXG. But just to remind you, there is just a tiny asterisk on this for them if they are looking to the future. But as of right now, they'll be headed back to Games Bar to see if they can try and get this done yet again here. And I believe we've got some changes coming through on this operator lineup as well. Just a little bit of a housekeeping note, folks. While these teams are in prep phase here, I've been reminding folks of it on every game. But we are currently not playing on the most recent patch. We were on one patch before that, uh, which means that things like the Roni recall changes and other things are not in play right now. I just wanted to let you guys know about that for anyone. What else is it? I'm yeah, for, for the like more nerdy Siege players <laughs> out there, they don't. I don't think they have any like sweep. Thing, huge changes coming. Uh, well, the biggest thing is the recoil stuff. Well, it's the recoil stuff, and then there's a really fun one. You want to know what it is? What's that? It's the cap can changes. Oh. Where you can put uh, an absurd amount of them on a singular door and just oh. kill somebody instantly. Okay. Yeah, see, All now right. I would have loved to have cast that. Today, I mean, with how much cap count or capital play we're getting today, anyway, <laughs> that really seems to be competitive. That's probably going to swing into the meta here with the way we're seeing oh, it play. Absolutely. Especially, like, I mean, just think about this. If you can set up some, like, death doors and then you have, like, a mute mozzie. That's not fun. But just to, <laughs> just, to, just to finish the point, uh, we're playing on that older patch, the reason mm, being indeed. that we wanted to keep the meta relatively the same uh, as the way it's been the rest of the stage. So we didn't want to throw a drastic change in there for the final two play days. Yeah, I got some uh, other odds and ends to uh, patch up inside of that as well. But as soon as they get that, obviously we'll, we, will, we will be playing on it. I'm assuming that we're more than likely not going to be playing on it for tomorrow as yeah, well. Probably. So, uh, But we'll keep you guys updated on that. As for round three and how things have been going so far, really not much has happened. And as to be expected is Dark Zero are getting this opening ensemble going. Just trying to see what they can find with these drones. And honestly, it's not going to be too much of a change here from OXG as Yago will be in a very similar position around the library balcony. Away from that, we are continuing to see Dark Zero build up their attacking presence across the map here. Starting to build up that courage to work their way in. 
We've seen in a lot of respects very, very sudden pushes from Dark Zero. That's a great one right there. All quiet for the previous minute and a half before this, and then all of a sudden, a member of OXG is taken out without much warning there. That's Canyon once again assisting with that as he'll take some heat from the fight. It still leaves OXG that one player weaker. And Dark Zero once again with the free initiation capability by having that extra player. Yeah, uh, honestly, I have been loving what we've been seeing from DZ right now and the way that they've been using NJR throughout this map. Uh, I mean, the importance of these other operators that they have in their lineup is just almost paramount, all except for really hyper, which the Adrenal Surges really do, you know, assist. But if you lose them early, that's not the biggest thing. But when things start to dwindle like they are right now, oh, man, it could just run away from you. Oxygen, they're going to get the fastest 3K that we've seen all day. Dark Zero, they're lost for words. They can't get any of these refrags to go off oxygen have finally found their mark and now for dark zero it's down to the clutch what a swing from them and now it's yeah brought the dark zero roster down to this final minute of the round here things were going so swimmingly for them and now it's turned itself around and they may not actually have the time to make up the difference here with so many members of oxygen still alive and more importantly out and about from the site as well it's going to be such a difficult task here for dark zero to successfully make their way into the site you can tell though they're well aware of the odds stacked against them and njr takes such a slow approach you can't find the trace, however, onto, I believe that's Foxy, but never mind, Foxy's down here at the bottom of the main stairs. He'll be found out by NJR, however, as another member of OXG falls, and the odds get a little bit better, but the time continues to shrink here for DZ. They get no closer to the site than they were previously. One final push is more than likely going to be how this ends. It needs to be all in, and it needs to be quick, and unfortunately, they need to keep an eye on everything, which they're not able to do. Eclipse exchanges out of the loss of NJR, but he's now forced to stick the plants, and Laxing will have a very easy time shutting him down to finally put OXG on the board here on the third round. Yeah, fantastic stuff from them in the mid round. Audible being called to apply the pressure to Dark Zero and finally some serious kills coming to the OXG camp. Extremely happy for them uh, because really it was just looking so lackluster throughout those first two rounds. I really didn't know what to say because that's not something that we exactly expect out of Oxygen, especially given their recent matches. They've looked so very good, especially in those mid rounds where they're really able to take it to their opponent. But finally, they get one on the board. Dark Zero have to go back to the drawing board to try and make some adjustments here, but luckily enough, it will not be back onto the game site. We'll be he headed back towards Kitchen with a six pick off of the bandit towards the pulse or Fox A, so expect him downstairs once again. All right, so let's see if Oxygen can keep this train rolling for themselves after finally getting some footing going there in the first round, countering out not necessarily the initial aggression we see from Dark Zero, but at least trapping them at a later point. Really turning things around in order to put them in much better control of the situation and obviously give them that much greater freedom at the end of the round to play into the aggressive play style that we very much know this team likes to play into when they have the chance to do so. For Dark Zero, though, I would expect more of the same. No huge changes specifically inside of the operator department, so strategy should remain pretty much the same as well. If anything, you're going to be keeping a closer watch and might be taking a slower approach to things when it comes to the initial entry due to what happened there at the midpoint on the previous round. Yeah, absolutely. And it could be something that we see for Dark Zero try and make an adjustment in and recognizing what can happen inside of that mid round. Start looking for, you know, that very quick full court press from Oxygen throughout the entirety of the map. But I'll have to see how this one breaks down. We all know and love Canadian, and it's for one thing, his IGLing ability. It's one of these guys that you can only perform one thing a singular time against them. But as well, Canadian will be picked off first. He's going to be able to oversee the entire of his team uh, from the death screen. So nicely done there as Canadian falls out and while that is certainly going to potentially increase the leadership capabilities of Dark Zero for this round, it will decrease the aggressive capabilities they have overall due to the loss of the Yana. Obviously, let me really go without saying that the loss of intel will be measurable here oh. too, although a bit of aggression from Vertical finally gets called, although he does return decent damage on his own regard. Panva wins the fight. Yes, what does he have left after that? As he's sitting around just 20 HP now, still with all three E1Ds in his pocket, meaning he has to sit in a corner so that utility can be of some use to the rest of the squad. Yes, indeed. And so the rest is oxygen. Very similar straights for them as well. It's patience as of right now to see what DZ are capable of doing throughout the rest of this minute and 40 seconds. Although Fox A, he'll be able to have a very good read as to what is the situation overall throughout the map, especially with the top floor and outside of the building right here outside of Kitchen. So he'll keep an eye on Pambazoo and what happens on this top area. For Dark Zero, it looks like Solarium might be the entry point here for them as they try and clear things in through 
Peru Trophy. But again, this is going to get read out. And with Pambazoo, I believe watching the drone hole, he's actually not going to have an opportunity here to try and stop Fox, who has now preset a Nitro Cell here. Unless that ended up just going off right now, I really can't tell if those holes were already there. But we'll have to see when Dark Zero try to go for their swing in a Solarium. See that start now here as NJR already commits himself into it as we've seen before. Oh. Look at this play from Laxing. What? Leaps into the fight, steals the case right out of Eclipse's hands. Cannot find NJR though, so it gets exchanged just as quickly. And NJR is looking for more blood here as he has a view into the front door area, but is not able to line up a shot against any of the members of OXG. Oh. Still though, Pampa's going to be able to lock down on the Fox A eventually as he's caught in the corner. That brings it down to just two now for the defense as it's going to come to Kino and Yaga to clutch this out. It's the new blood from OXG that need to win this round. Well, two frag grenades on Dark Zero side as well. Zero EE1Ds. It's down to these two drones to find these lone two members from Oxygen on separate ends of the spectrum here, trying to defend the site. Solid oversight here from Dark Zero, but Hyper missed some crucial shots. Pambazoo will get the refrag, and it's a triple kill right now for him on the round, but it's all up to Yaga inside of the clutch with very minimal time. Dark Zero have, tr have to try and stick a plant here, and that's up to NJR with Pambazoo to oversight it. Some solid shots from Yaga, but he can't get them to land. He'll have to re-swing into it, but Pambazoo punishes him, swings right off the kitchen door, and Dark Zero are not letting this one go by the wayside. Young Guns from both of our teams here fighting their hearts out in the dying moments of the round, but it goes the way of DZ yet again. They steal back the control they already had in the first two rounds here. OXG seem to lock onto the plot, and to be fair, they're definitely putting up a much better fight here inside of the mid and late round situation, but still, Dark Zero takes control of the lead away again, and that's what's important here, especially we're heading into the tail end of the first half. OXG only have these final two rounds to make an impact. Yes, they could still tie it up, but at the same time, we could very easily look at a 5-1 scoreline. Yeah, absolutely. And for Oxygen, you kind of got a feel for them inside of that one, especially for Laxing. I, I mean, it seemed like he fed Habana that MX4 Storm mm -hmm. magazine, and they were still persistent, still alive, did not get the frag necessary, and had to double back. And, and really, that's all it takes inside of Rainbow Six. It was that split second, and Laxing ends up dying there instead of getting the 2K that could have ended up getting gifted to him. So for Oxygen, they're going to be down two rounds instead of one like it was previously. Dark Zero, I mean, they just look convincing today. Uh, the biggest thing as of right now is, Troy, we kind of need to see you get on the board. <laughs> well, we'll see how he's able to develop that. Not the first player today that's been struggling a little bit in the fragging department, but Yeah, poor still, Yeti, right? I mean, yeah. like, like he was saying, I mean, I mean dude, the Yeti, timings, man, the, the timings. Thing, the thing with Yeti, Yeti <laughs> redeemed himself at the end of that <laughs> that's match. That's true. He picked up a solid, like, seven or eight kills. I think he ended up having more than Super at the end of that match. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> you know I, Say that purely for statistical means, but um, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so ended up picking up like seven or eight, eight kills in like mm -hmm. what, like three or four rounds, something like yeah. that. So either way, a massive turnaround from him. We just need to see that from Canadian as well. Yeah, a huge bounce back. But I mean, uh, initially for like the first four or five rounds, yep. I was just sitting there. I'm like, rough. Xander, you're on Maverick, man. Come on. <laughs> uh, but hey, as you said, they bounced back in a pretty convincing fashion, especially uh, for Yeti's case. And we're hoping to see the same here from Canadian. He's made a pretty big auto here, bringing in the Ying, so he's really going to have to focus on that survival rate here. We do not want to see him get picked off early on. We really want to see these drones come through and find some solid info for DZ, because losing any of them, besides NJR, seriously, early is more than likely going to be detrimental. Hyper also kind of in that same boat, but you really want to keep those adrenal surges up just so you have those for execute or for clearing out the map when you want some more health and zero recoil. See, once again, big focus on the setup is going to shift over here towards fending off pressure from the front lobby instead as they start to see where the initial pressure from Dark Zero is going to work its way in from here. On top of the fact that, once again, OXG had quite a bit of resistance set up initially, only in the backside over towards Solarium there. So that's just going to have that one laser gate in front. I'm assuming ADS pressure as well, but if Dark Zero do focus the pressure primarily on the office side, they are going to be able to dodge quite a bit of the utility that was set up to counter a Solarium play. It's not to say, of course, they won't try to use that as well, but it's certainly not looking like it at the moment with the way that DZ is getting their approach towards the office going here. You can see Habana doing work to open up the office wall itself and allow this team to the inside. And that's seems to be going off without too much of an issue as the defenders unfortunately don't have much of a way to stop that. Now Eclipse is going to be making a small breach on the right hand side and I assume actually gets hidden by that half wall off the back end. But the issue is, is that Vertical's got this angle inside a piano to oversee the breach. So Dark Zero 
one have to try and find a solution to this. It might start now with the EE-1D coming in, but that's just going to be somewhat of a distraction while they try and clear out all of this utility. Obviously, the damage starting to come in now as well as Fox. They starting to catch some heat around the door, and finally, Canadian will shut him down after some solid marks overall by the DZ squad. It's going to be an adrenal surge out, but no one really trying to muster themselves forward just yet as they're just waiting to see what these members want to do. And, well, oh, no. For Oxygen, it's going to be quite a bit of damage on to Vertical, who's playing around that piano oh, space, really trying to here. get up on top of that. And, well, for Oxygen, it's down to this. They really need some frags oh, back. Way. And, oh, he looks the wrong way. They both try and combat this space, but Hyper comes up huge with this. It's all down to Laxion in the one versus five, and Canadian will be the last one to hop in as he gets his second frag. Good first pick there from Laxion, but ultimately a futile effort as we could see the gates closing in on him and not giving him any room to play with in that situation there. Dark Zero snap the jaw is shut with their fragging capability one final time. And speaking of things we're finally getting, it's going to be the pause coming out from OXG here. Like I said, had a bit of a glimmer of hope with that one round that they picked up, and what's all things are pretty close contention for the rounds after that, including, but this one once again has gone back to more of what we saw to Dark Zero in the first and second round. Clean executes abuse of the setups to a degree where they are sitting waiting for a player to make one or two steps in the wrong direction. That gives them another kill, and they build on top of that slowly but surely to eventually overwhelm Laxing in the final seconds to win the round. You know, I, I feel like the, the best way to, uh, to like, talk about how Dark Zero are currently playing this is it's, it's like a, uh, what is it, Chinese water torture or whatever, where they have the water droplet, like, constantly hit your forehead? What? Yes. I, I think yes. so. Yeah, that's, that's basically really what it is. I don't know where you're going with this. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is, is like, it's, it's, it's slow and over time. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. they got the initial pick. We can get back from this. Oh, wait, somebody else died. Okay, now they're executing onto site. Uh, guys, they're planting. Oh, oh, we're all dead. Like, it's just like a slow deterioration yeah. throughout the round. It, it's not all at once. And that's what I'm really appreciating about, uh, really appreciating about Dark Zero right now is that they don't get that initial uh, pick or that pick onto site and they're like, hey, we have got to execute right now where, you know, Oxygen are going to be prepared for them. Instead, they're messing with this pacing and really, really making Oxygen wonder what the next step's going to be. And that's what I really appreciate about this. And that's why I was trying to point out the comparisons because it really really just feels like that slow broil over time as they just slowly deteriorate oxygen. Like quite a few of our other teams here, Dark Zero has been surprising us with their comeback performance after the two-week break and is currently leading 4-1 to one versus OXG on the inside of this matchup. This is important to note as well. Dark Zero, yes, are currently 6th in the division, but they also have far more matches to play remaining than any other team, and they have a pretty much bonus match when compared <laughs> to most of the other teams currently fighting for contention for playoff spots. With that extra opportunity, Dark Zero could still sneak their way in much better than some people may be considering. Yeah, yeah honestly, this could be a pretty interesting uh well, next day, actually, since obviously today is our last game as of right now. So it, it could honestly build up to be quite the interesting case as to what could happen to DZ in the future. But either way, we are into the last round now, folks, for this half as Oxygen currently sitting one up to the Dark Zero's four with the possibility of a 5-1 split in favor of the DZ offense. And they've looked very, very solid throughout this. Some great adjustments from Canadian in particular. Love the Ying pickup the last, uh, last round, but uh, obviously weren't able to get too much done with that because it wasn't a necessity. So he's going to move back away from that and pick the Capital back up, which is exactly why we saw DZ take away that Wamai ban. This is going to be the main thing that we uh, ended up seeing Canadian play throughout this entire offensive half. So let's see here now as Dark Zero looking to really seal the deal with one final round on the attack for themselves. It is going to come onto a much more difficult site there where we have seen a bit of success from the Oxygen camp also in fending off specifically these initial picks coming from Library, meaning that Dark Zero might actually take a different step this time and try and find that initial pressure. However, it's not looking like that based on the initial positions of these players from our top-down POV. Still a big focus on the Library play. Hyper, of course, keeping eyes on all of these windows that can be shot out from the front of the building to make sure that no trouble will befall them as they try to work their way into the side of library. Well, 45 seconds in here now as Oxygen slowly trying to move up towards Dark Zero and see if they can find any of these very influential initial picks. Oxygen have been looking for them time and time again, but it's usually Dark Zero to find our opening engagements. Oxygen 
going to be holding on to this top floor for quite some time, and that's also going to be what Dark Zero are looking into currently. Lots of drones around this top floor, finding out some particular spaces, and particular space that Canadian actually oh, found. Yuck. Oh, man, absolutely slapped. That was that was just not kosher right there in the slightest. Canadian will get taken down, but NJR will get the refrag. And once again, NJR coming up huge here for DZ. Fox say that with another potential to frag this right back against the members of Dark Zero. Oh, but it's no. going to be NJR once again taking over the show here. He's still got to figure out Fox say though. This is the tricky one. This is the one that might have gone undroned or unnoticed at a minimum. However, NJR is checking. He knew he was there, but Fox say still gets the better of the gunfight there. Brings it back and actually evens out the player count due to the pick that Yaga got at the beginning of the round. Indeed, and now with a minute down, it's a three versus three here as Foxy gets picked up. I thought he'd try and leave the space or at least find some safe harbor inside of here, but no, standing in clean sight of the window, and now Dark Zero, they're running away with the bag, John. They've killed Laxine as well. It's all down to Winax Papa. We have got to say it, folks. It's vertical to try and clutch this up inside of the one versus three. Do they have info on him, though? Yes, they do. We just saw the drone down to the right, and also the EE1D will catch him off guard as well. He'll get immediately pushed out of blue, but now he has the verticality, oh. and oh my god, oh Eclipse, you are the luckiest man alive. Count your stars because vertical does not miss very often, and that was a blunder. Yeah, unfortunately, the pressure just getting to him, it seems, inside of that situation there. Dark Zero with so much control, and it's so unfortunate for Vertical, too. He was in a great position. If we didn't see that library player aggress, because it looked like that was not going to happen, that library player was pretty concerned about the top-down angle. Had had we not seen the aggression come out from that player, Vertical would have been perfectly safe to hold that stairwell and more than likely have a pretty good chance of denying both of the entries coming in from the side door, which at that point just turns it into a pretty straightforward 1v1, where he doesn't have to take it because the case would have gone down but doesn't pan out that way. He's forced out due to the great intel play from Oxygen to figure out where he's at. And then, of course, the unfortunate gaffe in the final gunfight seals the deal. You know, that, that three versus three was actually really difficult to watch, yeah. especially if you're an Oxygen fan, because they usually play those out so much better. You know, that, that was just a... <laughs> It, was, it almost seemed like just not, they weren't being themselves, you know? Like inside of the three versus three, we usually see Oxygen really muster that team play. They gather around each other and really take it to the opposition, but that's not exactly what we saw inside of that one. Instead, it was Dark Zero to strike first. And also, I just wanted to do, uh, remind you guys really, really quick, see, uh, really, really quickly, rather, uh, why Vertical is indeed named Wanax Papa. I just want to read this to you guys for those of you that were just joining us a little bit late before uh, we pop off on this second half. So, uh, Vertical said on Twitter today that he will be playing as Winax Papa in memory of his cousin who passed away last week. He loved gaming and it was his dream to make it somewhere into gaming. So, Frankie Vertical couldn't make his funeral today, John, so instead he did the second best thing and he adopted his gamer tag inside of game. And honestly, you know, if that was my situation and my cousin did that, I, I don't even know what I'd say, man. That's that's some very serious tears. So shout out to Vertical because obviously we are all as a community going through a hard time, but him especially yeah. is also going through a very hard time. But round seven, guys, now on the board. I just want to make sure you guys were aware of that because it is indeed a very touching story. Definitely the case. Very touching show overall here today is remembering many, many members of this community, whether extended or not. Coming to the closing end of it here, Vertical trying his best to pay his due diligence to his cousin. As we can see, though, the struggle for OXG is alive and well on the outset of the second half. They're on the attack for the first time now as we get into that seventh round, but Dark Zero on the defense. As your expected setup for, I believe, the bar hold coming out for them right now as we have the extended library play. NJR also stuck in his little nest there in between the library and blue stairs connector. And the castle barricade, pretty unique as well inside of this space. We'll see what exactly that plays into, but they got the rotation for this area as well, so I don't necessarily know what they're going to look into trying to abuse there. It's more than likely the cross angle that's allowed through that space that's deep inside of a library, but you never really know, especially when you're looking just straight down at the map. But either way, Dark Zero, they've got a solid defense of this top floor so far, but not until Yaga has something to say about it. And he'll actually end up getting the initial frag here onto NJR, the most impactful player thus far from DZ. Halfway through the round here now, and Oxygen have gotten that initial pick against NJR, but not a lot beyond that as of yet. Even when it comes to building control, a lot build up over towards the Solarium side, but we still need to see them transition things towards the Library Hold. This is going to challenge players like Hyper, in addition to the others holding upstairs here, but actually those positions don't seem to be 
held and locked for very, very long as Dark Zero wants to bring this down later on into the round, wants to take this fight a little bit closer to the site. And that plan does have a risk and that is going to make the situation a bit more claustrophobic for DZ when push comes to shove. Where she could very well isolate out much, much more instead of the spread play where Dark Zero could have a few surprises waiting. Things will continue to go well for OXG as we'll see Vertical find out Hyper next, knocking out the Aruni and leaving it just on Canadian, Panba and Eclipse to bring this round back. DZ still have something to bring out though. It's gonna be Eclipse working himself back up through the basement main stairs to push into this. Panba as well is swinging forward to get a bit aggressive in his own angle here now, but Canadian struggling. He's the only one in the site holding the line right now. He needs some support, he needs it quickly, but it won't arrive in time. He'll find himself in a down state here. Laxing as well, running a bit of a circle at the moment. He will get spotted out by a default cam. Eclipse getting oh. into this site, finds himself one, but goes down to Kino a moment later, leaving just Panba as the only remaining member of Dark Zero still in this fight. And he's still got four members of OXG to take out here. Kino and Laxon get the job done, and that's going to be them getting onto the board in their initial round on the attack. Very well done from Oxygen there. Loved the clear across as well. They ended up really applying that pressure to the top floor onto Dark Zero. Really never a chance for DZ to try and battle back. It got kind of awkward there once we saw Eclipse down low with those rotations as Ella. There was definitely a chance for DZ to get up and on to six points already, but that was quickly swept under the rug from Oxygen. Beautiful adjustment from them uh, to go for games instead. That bar site would have been a little difficult, just, you know, obviously with the verticality that could have came in there as well. So really, really love to see what we had. Interesting pick kind of come out here from DZ as Thunderbird's going to be brought into the play again. Here we've been seeing little hints of her every now and again. Those mobile healing stations obviously activating a bit of an aggressive capability for our defending teams. And that's been the most notable way we've seen her get used now is to support the extended positions and allow for those players to have that little bit of an HP boost coming in constantly so that they can make sure they have the best odds in a gunfight when one finally does come their way. Yeah, you know, it, it's, a, it's a piece of utility that's pretty unique inside of Rainbow Six overall. Obviously, this is a operator that uh, is basically Doc 2.0. That's kind of that's kind of how I look at it, because she has much more of a healing capability across the board than he does. Dark, uh, well, well, for Doc, usually, that's just going to be a gunfighting operator overall. You know, you might be able to heal one of your teammates once, but you're more than likely taking an early engagement, healing yourself, and trying to do that throughout the round. With Thunderbird, she can assist her entire team, even post-mortem, as well as on top of that, she's got the Spear 308, which is one of the only assault rifles on defense. And on top of that, she also has impact. So there's a lot of different things that she does. John was completely correct in what he was saying as well, as we usually see them around these areas where there's going to be a hard stance from one of the defenders. Area like here for Eclipse inside of Solarium, but also most notably Vase on Coastline as well, which is where we saw it constantly used by, I believe, the Sonics. All right, so let's see here now what OXG's plan will be members of DZ roaming around the map right now, but that seems to have been the formula to getting caught early on here as Panba will fall victim over here on the Thunderbird itself. You know, I believe getting that first frag for the team, and there's a couple other members of Dark Zero still out and about as well, most notably Hyper down on the first floor. They're probably going to want to pull that pack, seeing as things once again have not started out too brightly here at the outset of the second attacking round. It's been very difficult thus far, although they're starting to break some things up here and obviously pretty fortunate in the likes of picking up Pambazoo. But just remember, those Thunderbirds are going to stick around and be a little difficult in order to get rid of later on. It's going to keep quite a few of these Dark Zero members healthy going into these dying moments. Now for Oxygen, it's really about abusing the map control that they've been able to gather throughout this initial minute and uh, 15 seconds, uh, specifically around Office. That's really when, where they want to start breaking up this floor. Obviously, some breaching available inside of Master as well, but that's going to be the main game plan. Get Vertical in here and start trying to apply pressure through those means, uh, but but they still have to deal with NJR's positioning currently up here inside of Solarium. It's going to be a frag grenade out, but it's eaten up by an ADS. NJR will have to end up hopping down. No one, luckily enough for him, managing the trophy window, so he'll stay alive. Things stay somewhat palatable here for Dark Zero, as although, yes, they take the initial loss against Panba, they've held on to their entire roster past that point, are still keeping some good aggression across the map here to fend off these pushes from OXG. Yogg, for instance, here is going to use the Gemini to quickly bait out the laser gate and get rid of that. And now we'll have the free access to Solarium that this team needs to move themselves forward and start to make the transition down with this nice angle from Hyper 2. If anybody tries to go on repel towards Solarium, that could be an early death for a member of OXG. But Canadian's got other concerns here to deal with back down 
down inside of the kitchen as another member of the OXG roster tries to take the duel from the top hatch. And now, while well, over here oh, towards no. the blue stairs, Laxing's found Eclipse. We've seen Vertical pick up Canadian. That defensive matrix is holding for a good minute or two there, but it is now falling to seams, unfortunately. And it's left only NJR and Hyper still in the fight. Although a nice steal being picked up there by NJR as he takes out Laxing. Another player goes down also. Foxe knocked out of the play, although potentially revivable. Here we'll have to wait and see. Never mind. Hyper confirms it. Takes him out of the play and leaves just Kino, Vertical, and Yaga in the clutch situation here now. But there we go. Kino and Yaga complete their wraps around. Flank out this retake from DZ and secure it for themselves instead. I mean, just too many oxygen bodies at the end of the day. Way too many different positions that they can be in and not enough insight for Dark Zero to really try and get anything rolling inside of that clutch moment. Yes, the initial kill has come through, but again, oxygen's positioning is just going to be extremely difficult to try and read out at that moment. So you really can't fault them for that one as Oxygen is trying to shore up this lead of Dark Zero. He's currently sitting at 5-3, trying to get as many rounds on the board before Dark Zero reaches that penultimate round. Yeah, Dark Zero fighting against the tide, it seems, with OXG, finding these great opening picks in very much the same way that Dark Zero was doing. Uh, we see the Dark Zero defense constantly moving out around the map here inside of the opening moments of it, and OXG are able to use their drone presence along with this good pre-positioning in order to cancel out those players moving around and knock out one or two of them as we saw Dark Zero doing the same exact thing on their own attack. Dark Zero needs to find a way to avoid these opening picks so that they can put up a much better fight and slow down the pacing from OXG to where they can truly control these rounds. They're going to try to do that once again over here towards the bar in games hold as we'll see the extension come out from Dark Zero in a second. There's going to be a pretty heavy reliance on that extended library play as well in order to make sure that this goes off well and more than anything they waste the time of OXG. Yeah, as for Dark Zero right now, it's really who is the next person to step up to the plate inside of this frag department. We have Pamazoo doing pretty well right now. Obviously, NJR has been lights out throughout the entirety of this chalet thus far, currently 12-4 and 1. But as for the rest of the team, you really can't say the same thing. And, you know, we really do expect quite a bit out of Hyper especially, but Eclipse is no slouch in the slightest. So either one of them, as of right now, they're the winning ticket for this team if either of them can have some serious influence over these next handful of rounds. We're into round, uh, round 9 now, folks, as Oxygen will begin breaking up this top floor. We'll have uh, Foxy actually outside on the balcony. He'll be managing the case for the time being. He'll be drawing out this space to try and assist Laxiner, or rather, Papa on Repel. Continue to see that time tick down, and for OXG, they'll continue to look for the opening frag capability here against DC, but. It's been a much longer process this time of trying to isolate it out, and so far it's gone unsuccessfully. NJR is going to have a nice charge eaten up against him here, but in a follow-up, Fry Grenade will actually make some decent impact against him as about a third of his HP will be knocked out as a result of that grenade coming in. NJR, of course, still keeping close overwatch on this angle, and he'll have another teammate making sure that he's supported in the process of doing this too. More than likely going to see NJR bail from this spot though due to the drone spotting him out, but never mind, just changes his stance and will stay due, again, to the amount of additional support he has. He feels he's safe because not only does he have Hyper assisting him from the outside, but there's another one holding blue stairs as well to make sure doesn't get pushed from the back side here. So let's be careful things like the side window and whatnot, but all secured for the time being. And away from that, he did lose his balcony support there as Hyper ended up having to rotate back down. NGR is actually now going to take up this position as we've reached a much later point in the round where they don't need to keep such heavy presence up here anymore. No, absolutely not. Any of these initial picks that they can find as well are going to play heavily into their hands. So we'll see exactly what they can get done with this space. Library obviously going to be the main game plan right now for Oxygen, but they have to get through NJR in order to take control of this. The case currently downstairs waiting to see if they can possibly try and push forward. But that library area is obviously going to be the initial piece of the puzzle that they need to actually get this going. NJR, he's going to get droned out, so he's going to adjust back out to his deployable shield on library balcony but the thing is is that they're delaying so much time right now there's 50 seconds remaining in all the more this happens all the more it gets more difficult for oxygen yes it's a five versus five but this can go so very wrong in a moment's notice but it looks like it's all going to be starting relatively soon yaga currently standing around mud room he'll hop in hop immediately out but it's not even going to be him to get the initial frag instead it's going to be a refrag njr takes down fox a laxing with the refrag and laxing with two as well dark zero starting to fall 
Dark Zero once again holding for that first minute or two, but the late round seems to always fall the way of OXG, and this round is no exception. Still has a very fightable roster up and running, though, so this is not over just yet, especially with only 20 seconds remaining for OXG to try and put their case down on the ground. They're putting the effort in, but the utility starting to come out for the defense as well now. Canadian with a pick, and Panba also to take out Laxing. Here comes the drop and the plan attempt, though, as Kino runs right into the spray pattern from Canadian. There will be the trade that comes up from Vertical, and he's going to get this case down just in time as well, but he doesn't have the security he needs. Panba will run up, shuts down the round for Dark Zero, and they go up on map and match point. Wow, I I'm honestly surprised that we did not see more energy out of Dark Zero on that one because that was a moment that he desperately needed that as well. Able to battle back against Oxygen, who had some very serious control, not only on that top floor, but also the side hallways around the entirety of the site. We saw Laxing uh, really operating around that fireplace hall space extremely well. Two big kills and able to try and push his team forward into the actual site, but it all falls apart for Oxygen. They try a little bit too quickly for the case. They try and hop in in order to combat that. And, well, Vertical has to stick the case. He eventually gets off and ends up getting the fight. But, I mean, past that, OXG just lose way too many people trying to get this case down. We're going to see an interesting pick come in from Dark Zero. What could be our final round? No smoke to be seen, but we do get a Tachanka pick coming out from our defenders here. So NJR is going to bring that into the fold and those incendiary grenades, which <laughs> he can troll. lob out <laughs> over the course of this round to try and delay things against the OXG push. It's also going to be in the basement hold here, too. So there's quite a bit of uh, wall angles that he can use to bank these these uh, incendiaries off of. Yeah, more than likely practice. And if you guys are wondering yeah, why yeah. I'm saying uh, uh, this is a little troll. It's because uh, NJR is currently 13 and 5, and you're like, yeah, put him on Chaka, why not? <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, the, he's playing really, really well. But, you know, it, hey, you, you can, as long as you can shoot straight with every gun, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't have a problem. So we'll see what Pambazoo is, or rather NJR is capable of inside of this one, as well as what gun he's bringing as his primary. Is it going to be the Russian SMG, or is it going to be the LMG that we all know and love? See in just a second here, once we get our players into fighting shape, NJR is also going to be on cam duty apparently. So, oh, he's actually brought the assault rifle. So we're just gonna bring the normal one. He's got the sub, man. That's it. Oh, that's is a is that an SMG? Okay. Yeah, it's an SMG. That looks, yeah. that looks like a rifle to me. So. No, it, it really does. It also, like, the rail on top kind of yeah, yeah, does that. Yeah. I, com I completely understand where you're coming from. It's, a uh, like, body-wise, kind of similar to the, no, not looks-wise, by the way, folks. I'm saying size-wise. Uh, 416C, like, size-wise, it looks very similar. So I understand what you're saying. It kind of looks like a carbine. So. Like a mini AK. Yeah, like, like a, like a little, 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 little bean. This is a little bean. Little AK-74 you know? action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, it. you're talking. Listen, man, you're preaching to the choir. The AK-74U on Black Ops. Oh, that was my bread and butter, man. It's <laughs> my bread and butter. All right, well, let's see here now as we've got the members of Dark Zero being a little bit more out and about this time. I think because they have the extra security of the delay potential that could come in from NJR in the final seconds, they're feeling a bit more adventurous and are going to be okay, it seems, to lose maybe one or two players should things go the way they have been in prior rounds with OXG usually getting these picks. Obviously, Dark Zero wants to turn that around in their own favor, but so far no dice here. However, things could change over the next couple of uh -oh. moments, and they will indeed, right on cue. Panba quickly taking out Yaga. Hyper will unfortunately get spotted by a drone, though, so he's going to give up his aggressive adventures here and start to fall back towards the basement. Once again, with the player advantage already in their control, there's not a huge reason for them to continue playing like this. They're more than likely going to try and delay a little bit from the first floor, but other than that, they will play to the site. Well, Oxygen obviously in need of a frag here onto Dark Zero, but after that initial one, See an adjustment from DZ. They'll be playing around this bottom floor. Obviously, Pan Bazoo will make the adjustment all the way back down low. Looks like we currently have four inside of this space. Make it five as we now spot Canadian inside of the B site here. So, Dark Zero all downstairs. It's up to Oxygen to actually propel themselves forward and try and get something done here. But the biggest thing is, is now that they're down Yogg, they don't have the free intel like they once did. As well as, look at this drone count. Foxy's already lost his as a support lag. Laxine's down one. He's got some cams up, but this could get so very risky. Shotgun out as Eclipse will be managing this space, but they've more than likely seen that laser there and know that it's coming soon. ADS will get actually shot out here, but doesn't, don't think we have any frag grenades in the area to actually assist this. We have to have Vertical come across in order to do that. So they're just going to continue to play Ring Around the rosy here on Blue Stairs because oh. Eclipse, that's why the M590, you barely have to peek. As long as you get that shot off, you're dealing some very serious damage. And now Oxygen are down to three members. And Eclipse is going to keep popping away. I mean, you see all this a couple of shots ago, or a couple of lineups ago. He's got the headshot angle for this peak. He knows exactly where to aim this. And
and that second one is as oh. clean as can be. Canadian with a quick cross to shut down Fox as he works his way in. There was some success for oh, XG, come on, but it's Troy. all gone now Woo. as Canadian does it a second time to close out on the match. Dark Zero take victory here today and are well on their way to climbing the leaderboard between today and tomorrow to maybe, just maybe, try and push themselves into the top four. Oh, 7-3 victory for Dark Zero, and honestly not one that I was expecting, especially in the fashion that it happened. I mean, NJR and Pambazoo just going electric inside of this. NJR specifically with 13 frags. It really seems like Dark Zero is starting to get their footing under them. And that's been really a theme today with quite a few of our teams here having a couple weeks off to recenter themselves. It seems that a lot of work was done, and not just for Dark Zero as well. Beast Coast putting up a good fight initially. Obviously faltering there, but still some good things to write home about Mirage as well being the more obvious one here with how well they were able to perform versus the Sonics. Quite a few teams stepping up to a decent degree here today and that makes me very excited for what's going to happen tomorrow when we lock in who's going forward to the major. Oh, I am so very excited to see what we have in store for tomorrow. I mean, I don't think it get, could get more exciting than this, you know what I mean? So many teams with six points and now Dark Zero picking up some very serious ones for themselves. So with Dark Zero starting to push ahead, that leaves the question of where our playoff contentions are going to be. And we'll be figuring that out in ju just a few moments once we head back to our desk and see how exactly they are going to be feeling about themselves. Away from that, though, Stokes, again, really impressive stuff coming out here today from Dark Zero. Execute capability specifically was top notch on the attack. We saw that those first two rounds, they kept getting kills and they did not stop past that point. Other members of OXG try to come in to assist. Dark Zero seemingly already has the reads on that and is shutting those players down as well. And we see that once again in the final seconds there as Vertical, or rather, the great holdover on Blue Stairs there to immediately punish players that work in their way. At least with clips, actually. Mm -hmm. And then we saw Canadian with those two great shots to finish things off. I mean, just a truly disgusting match from uh, Dark Zero overall, especially for NJR. I believe he had like eight kills inside of the first three rounds. But either way, folks, you guys have heard enough of both of our voices today. We're going to toss on over the analyst desk and they're break down this match and send you guys on your way for one of our last play days. Shout out to Stokes and Blue, and thank you so much. But Dark Zero versus Oxygen, fellas, this road to Sweden for Dark Zero is starting to come alive right now with this first win against Oxygen. And with the highlights brought to us from our Predator, Jacob and Jesse, I want to hear your thoughts about how this game went down. Man, if there was going to be a prediction that I got wrong today, I am happy it was this one. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. DZ getting some very much needed corrective measures into the midst of their repertoire. They got attack wins. They didn't just get one, two, or three. They got five attack around wins. The thing that we've been critical of them for the entirety of this stage. Crazy. I'm not going to call it a full gone conclusion that, they're, that they've got all of their problems sorted out, but they got five rounds against an OXG team that usually isn't the most predictable on paper. That's had a very strong stage. That's a regulation victory. Yeah. These you should be feeling really good about themselves right now. Yeah, definitely big. But um, let's talk about the game right now. Um, Jacob, Panba on Lion, you gave me a really big factor saying, you oh, know yeah. what, man, DZ, they're not really known for that. And um, I'm going to hear more about how you think that was just such an influence in this matchup to beat Oxygen. Dude, it was huge. So Panba isn't really somebody who plays a lot of Lion. In fact, Dark Zero as a whole isn't a team that plays a lot of Lion for Flank Watch. If they did it in the past, it was Nomad. That's typically what they stick with. But the cool part about this is they played Lion to a T Everyone in OXG loves to roam. We talk about them very, like, doing that super heavily. Kino does it. Laxing does it. In this case, everyone roams, and crowd control is what does them in. Everyone on OXG can't find any common ground any place. They're attempting to hold down a room. They can't do it because Lion's forcing them out in the open. They're trying to move backwards. They can't do that because Lion is keeping them contained in really tight corners, and there's crossfires that Dark Zero are able to set up five attacking wins. I'm going to put a lot of that on the way that Pamba was playing it. It was giving Hyper the chance to get kills as well as NJR. And Pamba for his own right through that attacking half had like eight or nine kills as Insane. the Lion yep. creating that impact. It's crazy how, how influential one operator pick was for DZ. Now Jesse, he mentioned NJR as well. And you have something to say about that boy. 
NJR was tearing it apart, especially in that first half playing on the sledge, right? This was the big moment for him to come in and really make a difference. It didn't even feel like it was a lot of like nade kills or like top down play. There was some of that for sure, but a lot of it was sort of picking up for his teammates, being able to trade out players, being there in the midst of the push to pick up those last couple of kills to secure a round. He was a big player in this matchup. And it was kind of funny because when the sides swapped and it actually started to mount their comeback, Vertical picked up that sledge and he'd been having a bit of a rough game up until that point. But that was when he started to turn it on as well. Still playing that same operator in the right place at the right time, comfortable getting those kills. So I don't know what it was about sledge today on Chalet, but that was a big moment for both teams. Well, Dark Zero definitely needed it. And speaking of which, we actually need an interview with Canadian. He's coming up right now. An OG in the game. And um, first things first, Troy, I love the get up. I love the outfit. I love the war paint. I love the headband. I'm loving everything right now. But um, currently, Jacob and I was talking about the road to Sweden. You guys are one of three so far, and tomorrow you have two more play days. Your backs are against the wall. How does that make you feel? Um, I mean, we uh, we definitely had a bit of like a slow start, I'd say, this season. I mean, even we still have to prove anything. I think today was probably our best showing yet um, out of the season. But just slow thing to start the season, just because I, I was new to the team, seeing how how they meshed with my play style, stuff like that, just figuring things out as it as it goes with a with a new team but yeah we got we got some more time to work on things and i think we're we're getting on the right track now um but yeah everything's it's in our hands right now uh if we win in regulation we make it to sweden so uh just one game at a time one round at a time doing our thing and yeah want to make it happen all right i mean canadian I've been somewhat critical of your team over the last couple of play days. Yes, you have been. Somewhat. You know, <laughs> somewhat. But I do want to say this game, you guys played really well. You knocked it out of the part. How were those last two weeks to like take the days off, be able to practice with the teams? What was able to change over the break of time to really improve your game? Well, days were not taken off. Um, <laughs> play so days were there, taken off. That. Say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a lot of hard work, a lot of hours put in talking and thinking about the game, trying some new things as a team, and just really trying to figure out what our style is with me on the team and with the, with the pieces that we have. Because I don't think we were quite playing our style prior. Uh, we, we have a lot of great minds on the team, and you know we, we all understand Siege really well. We have incredibly talented players, but it was just finding a matter of finding what fits right for us. And I think we're on the right track. Obviously, we have to continue to prove it. Um, I think this was our kind of first showing since we've kind of been getting on that track, but obviously I don't want to get ahead of myself. So <laughs> um, just one game at a time. We'll see what happens. But yeah, uh, we're, we're feeling good. Is there anything in particular about going into tomorrow that uh, is like of a big mental focus for you going into two games as opposed to one? Because in the NAL, you really only have one opponent to prep for for one day. Is there anything different that you're going to have to do going up against two opponents for tomorrow? Um, just making sure we're not exhausting ourselves between games. I think that's about it, though. As far as preparation, uh, we've we've already done what we need to do. Uh, a, a lot of the focus is on ourselves, um, as it should be when you're a new team and kind of finding your own identity. So, yeah, just uh, just kind of making sure we don't exhaust ourselves between games. Really, I'd say and stay stay energized and whatnot. All right, Canadian, you have a long history in Rainbow Six Siege, as we all know. You're a legend in the scene. But also, we all know about the other legend, Kickstar, and you have a long history with him. You've known him for such a long time. I was wondering if you had any words or any stories that you love to share about him. Um, I mean, I, I have a lot of memories with Kicks, and just, <laughs> I mean, honestly, some some in the moment were great, but just looking back on them now, I mean, it really it makes me really appreciate just the fact that we cross paths and um, the, the contributions he's made to the scene. Um, a big thing I really was thinking about is, uh, as everyone knows, he was formerly a competitive player and he really did something I think that brought more people into the game and to see the competitive side of the game that he loved so much and that I love so much. Um, I know he, it always even leaked through into his casting. Um, he just loves, or. He has always loved watching Great Siege. Um, and that was something he constantly mentioned and just, uh, he really took took it seriously to bring it into casting and kind of shine a light on that to, to more players and explore, expose more players to 
competitive siege and get the understanding and just the appreciation for the game that we have as pro players. Um, and it's something that I really appreciated about him. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I, literally this morning, I was just thinking about like, I, I really want all, all, all the players in the community really just let's, let's put on a show for him. And uh, yeah, we miss you kicks. And today was basically my favorite day in all of Rainbow Six because we were able to celebrate him in such a big way with great games, great commentary, and everything all around. Canadian, thank you so much. And we can't wait to see what's going to happen tomorrow for your double header. It's going to be insane. Good luck, and I hope you have a great night. Thank you. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I love the the war outfit, the war paint and all yeah. that. But um, fellas, that's it for today. Tomorrow is going to be the last day for the NAL, and it is going to be insane. But before we jump into that, let's take a look at the stats of what happened so far in this game. Oxygen didn't turn out to be the team that we thought they would be, Jacob, man. Um, the stat lines are there. Some of them aren't so pretty. And a 3-7 loss at Dark Zero. And NJR going 13-5 and five is a big reason why that they lost. Yep, OXG kind of got trapped and ensnared by DZ in that game. I think it was phenomenal that Dark Zero were able to adapt around something that their opponents were doing and not just playing their own game. It was, I mean, you can probably make the argument they're bringing a lion on Chalet and using it in that way is something you should probably end up doing anyway, but Dark Zero did it so effectively and it gave NJ, Panba, and Eclipse all adequate opportunities to shine in this matchup. That 90% cost kind of really highlights what NJR was doing that game for me. Ooh. He wasn't like a big flashy player. Like you looked at his scoreline, he had like 10 kills or something halfway through the game. Yeah. But like there was no big play that you're like, NJ just won this round, he's got the ace. Like it really was every round consistently contributing to the push, staying alive and helping his team out. So I mean, you gotta give credit to NJR, especially in these games where maybe you don't notice them as much as you should. All right, now we actually have a community poll as well. I'm not too happy about this one, all right? This protection, one because good. it is straight up disrespect. The question is something along the lines of who would do better in the game, me or if you guys have not tuned into the show, yes, Bonnie is Jesse's cat, but um, I who's do more agree, likely to get Jesse, zero kills? And, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's ahead. your cat, right? Yeah. I do think Spawny is a better Monty than Valley. You yes. shut. I'm the best shield player in the game, okay? I'm Black Pangu. Who's more likely to get zero kills while in a rank stack is a Valley or Spawny? Community, I hope you guys didn't let me down. <laughs> What's the numbers? <laughs> Seventy-one percent. There we go. People Spotty, really don't like sucks. the cat. No, that means they think you're more likely to get zero oh, I kills. I won. Belly, like, I would you, do lost, you lost. <laughs> you just <laughs> celebrated your ownness. <laughs> Jelly, Jelly, take the cell. It's been a long day. My brain hurts. Okay, it's been a long emotional day, but um. For all of you out there, I thought you guys loved me, man. But, you know, shout out to Spawny. That's a cute cat. But Your um, name has two L's in it, Valley. Hold both of them right now. Wow. <laughs> nice. Ah. I'm not asking him any questions tomorrow on the desk. I love being in person so much. <laughs> it's so much better. Let's talk about the MVPs of the day. And, um, Ooh. fellas, I'm going to be honest. Off the top of my head, Hot and Cold's 10 and 2. Hot and Cold's yeah, 10 and, and cold. 2, mm. but uh, Achieved had 23. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Achieved did break uh, the kill record for NAL this year. Record. So that's he pretty did? insane. I also think yes. Skies was 10 and 3. 10 and 3 I believe, as well, yeah. And I think he had a lot of impact in that game. There's a lot of good choices today. Oh, man. Great. Uh, it's got to be achieved at this point. I think it does. I think it is. There's, okay. good, there's some good runner ups. He broke the though. kill record. I think it's just about right. So. Hey, no, drum roll. The MVP of the day is going to be wow. none other than that man achieved breaking the kill record and going absolutely off in order for TSM FTX to win the game. The big thing with this game is TSM were not looking good around the board. Like, Achieved had to drag this team to the two points that they got at the end of that one. They were not looking like they were going to win that game. <laughs> Achieved said, screw this, we're not losing the X set, and pulled them through with 23 kills. 23 kills and holding on to an 86% cost at the same Ooh. time is just the yeah. most impressive stat line you're going to see probably for this whole stage. Now, he broke it. He broke the record for the whole stage. Oh, sorry, the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. No one else is going to be able to top this, I don't think. And he, he like <laughs> snuck his his uh, his nomination for MVP <laughs> in at the very last yeah. second. I mean, the year ends tomorrow, so legit. <laughs> Good luck. Absolutely insane. And um, what was that? It was hot and cold. What the last play date I got twenty two? Was it two play days before that? It was the game against TSM on Oregon. I want to say right. Like it yeah, wasn't that was that long insane. ago. Yeah. Exactly. Now let's talk about the standings. Okay, the storylines are thicker than ever, right? Three C's, whatever you want it to be. So when it comes to Sweden, Jess, we have two teams that currently qualified. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be highlighted at the top of your screen. It's going to be Space Station Gaming and also Oxygen. 
But Jesse, tomorrow is going to be insane. I mean, look at it. You have three teams in the mix. Yeah. Dark Zero, they have two more games. TSM and Sonics, they're fighting for that spot. What's going on? I mean, Valley, really what we're looking at here is uh, a, a bit of dirty play because Sonics won their game, which was enough to qualify Oxygen to the Major. And then all Auction had to do was win their game, which would qualify Sonics by denying the points <laughs> to their opponents. <laughs> but because Oxygen lost, Sonics aren't qualified. They didn't return the favor. And so Sonics are in a precarious position. TSM obviously as well worried about their point total. And as you mentioned, Dark Zero, six points in hand potentially to grab tomorrow and boost themselves up. That's huge. So Sonics are still looking to get in. TSM still looking to get in. And DZ are the only three teams that have a spot. Oh, there are two man. spots remaining on yeah. the plane to Sweden and three teams are vying for it, kind of similar to what we had for Mexico. Mirage, Astralis, Beast Coast, Exet cannot go to Sweden at this point. So for all of them, it's a matter of who's in the relegation conversation. Right now, it's Beast Coast, Exet, and Astralis. Mirage getting one point to break. What was a five-way tie at one point today is crucial for them to ensure that they don't have to worry about it. There still might be potential, but right now, you gotta feel for all three of the teams in seventh, eighth, and ninth, because there is still only one opportunity left for all of them, and the race is that tight still. And when you talk about tiebreakers, the one team Exet had tiebreak over in this massive tie was Dark Zero. Yeah. Since wow. Dark Zero got those points, Exet are not going to win any possible tiebreaker at all, unless there's some wild thing where it's a, a tiebreak at nine points. But there's yep. no way that happens. So what it comes down to, no tiebreakers, no additional math behind the scenes, yeah. no mini leagues. He, with the least amount of points at the end of tomorrow, Insane. goes to relegation. That's that's the end of the if story a right tie, there. It's exit. Yep. So the battle to go to Sweden, also the battle to get out of relegation, is going to be better than ever. But it's all going to go down tomorrow. Let's take a look at the schedule now. Tomorrow isn't going to be like any other day because Dark Zero they will have to play two different series. The first one against Astralis, and then the last one against Beast Coast. Yeah, and I mean the big thing for Dark Zero here, like yes, they have to play two games. But at least it's Astralis and Beast Coast. And I mean... Damn. I know. I know. Listen. Listen. Let's be real here. If this was like an Oxygen Space Station final day, they're screwed. Right? Like, yeah. those are good teams. Astralis Beast Coast are okay teams. They've had their moments. They've had their okay. ups and their downs. But these are two winnable matches for Dark Zero to take in and, and go to Sweden with two big wins here. And as Troy even said, it's in their hands, right? If they get six points, doesn't matter what TSM's doing. Dark Zero can overtake them and end up heading there because they have tiebreak over TSM. So if they get all of these, that game number three against Mirage doesn't even matter. Be quite an interesting comeback story. They are currently... Sonics, I believe. Sonics and uh, who are they looking else at? They're they're fans of so many other teams right now. <laughs> Dark Zero are like rooting for Mirage, and if memory serves, this OXG to win their matches. Yeah. And if they do, all of a sudden, all they have to do is win theirs, and they get a ticket to Sweden. And no one thought they'd get there, given how their first oh. couple of games went. So. Yeah. I'd be cool with it, and it would be dope to see Canadian back at a major tournament again. But man, they it's still kind of an uphill battle. Tomorrow's going to be juicy, and um, fellas, I'm going to have to say, okay, this is my first time working with both of you in person, and I have to say, it was the time of my life, my favorite play day ever in Rainbow Six Siege, right? But to close out the show, you guys already know the deal. Jesse, I'm going to start with you. Anything you'd like to say to the viewers at home, and give them a little reason why they should tune in tomorrow. Bittersweet day, eh? I mean, Indeed. we all love Kicks. I think this was a great show to be able to remember him and to, to honor him with such great matches. It's going to continue tomorrow. Don't, me don't miss tomorrow because there's so much more happening. We've got surprises, as you mentioned, oh, Valley. Yeah. We tease it out. We won't give too much away, but tomorrow there's going to be even more good stuff coming your guys' way. And also, working in studio for the first time as an NAL desk has been fantastic. Yes. I truly hope everybody's enjoyed because I think the energy has been amazing. I've really enjoyed it, Valley. Looking over to my right and not seeing a wall is just <laughs> <laughs> its something I never thought I'd experience. Oh, today's been hard. Jumping into today, I didn't want to get out of bed. I'll be, I'll be straight up. That was probably the biggest challenge was just making sure that, you know, I could get up and start the day. But what today has turned into is ultimately an extension of everything that we were doing in the NAL prior to today. We were 
doing our best to amplify the voices and the stories of everyone who's involved in the Rainbow Six esports scene. And I think we've done a really good job of that as today has progressed. It's just a matter of kind of like figuring the bumps out and kind of working as, uh, as we go. And that's going to be the story for probably like the next couple of weeks and months as we figure out in our own way the ways in which we're able to deal with, you know, the, the bumps in the roads or the grief or whatever it comes down to for each of us individually because it's never going to be the same for everybody. It's been really heartwarming to look at all the responses to kicks over the past couple of weeks, but I think all of us here are able to leave today understanding that we did the best job we possibly could. We're in an environment where we're capable of doing that, and it really does mean the world to see uh, everything that Kicks meant to everybody. And to see the games that we did today is just like, it, it feels like another day at the office, but we've all got each other. So we're going to just keep trucking. We're going to keep doing it for you guys, and thank you for everything that you've you've you know, done and sent to, to, to us, to showing us your support and everything. It genuinely has meant the world. Yeah, you know what? Today was definitely bittersweet. But you know what? At the end of the day, just one thing that we realize is Rainbow Six Siege isn't just a game. I mean, we're a community, we're a family. And the fact that we're all able to come together in order to have an amazing day like this. I mean, the NAL has never been this good. He was able, excuse me, he, Kix, was able to bring all of us together in order to celebrate something that he loved. And at the end of the day, it just has to be said, Kickstar is Rainbow Six Siege. And because of that, I'm happy to celebrate him. We're happy to remember him in the best way possible. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We have a pleasant surprise. You guys don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. And I would also like to give a big thanks to Face It and also Ubisoft for coming together and making this all possible. Without them, we wouldn't be here. And without you people at home, we wouldn't be here as well. We love you guys. Once again, we're family. You guys already know that. We'll see you all at the same place at the same time tomorrow to close out the NAL Season 2. And I can't wait. You all have a beautiful night. We'll see you guys next Bella, time. Come here. Come here.